Well, I think well, we I are think finally, finally ready to get started with our, all our new fangled equipment here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today for the Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, let's start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you'd please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Okay, we'll start the meeting with uh, citizen comments. Uh, we have quite a few comments today. We have a long agenda, so uh, we're gonna, I'm going to ask Nat to uh, uh, time these so we have three minutes per, per person. Uh, we'll start with Melissa Green. Um, would you come forward, please, and sit at the uh, table here uh, right in front of us and give us your name and uh, where you're from. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Melissa Green. I live about five and a half miles past the slide on the West Fork of Millicoma Road. And I spent a couple of days on the phone talking to a lot of different people, uh, the road department, the school bus, transportation system, the post office, ODOT, the uh, ambulance service. And I, I drafted this long letter sort of rebutting the excuses we've heard about why our road hasn't been being fixed. And I was going to sit here and speed read it to you. But last night, I had this epiphany. Um, you're smart people. You already know all this. You know the road is unsafe. You know that a school bus could be pushed 200 feet down the cliff into the river and buried with mud and boulders. You know that there is no reasonable detour for residents or services or emergency services. So my epiphany was that you don't really care. What happened to where there's a will, there's a way? Uh, put a man on the moon kind of American spirit. I don't think you have the will to fix this road. And so instead of standing up and saying, all right, how are we gonna get this done? And proceeding in that direction, we let every little speed bump become an insurmountable obstacle and a crutch of excuses to lean on. What's going to happen to our county if that's the kind of attitude that we have? How is our infrastructure and everything going to continue to crumble? And sitting here, I honestly have no idea how to address that issue. What I do know is that this is a public safety hazard and it's a dereliction of duties. We have a Coos County transportation system plan. If wishes were horses, we might as well just toss it in the shredder. Thank you for your time and congratulations on the election results. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next, Susan Miller. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Is this is this all right? All right. Uh, my name is Susan Miller. I am Melissa's mom and live about six miles above the slide um, on the West Fork on land that's been in our family for five generations. Over recent years, I've been unpleasantly surprised to see our public access roads deteriorate so dramatically. 
and to become so hazardous. I'd just like to bring your attention to this uh, and hope that it stays there to our road situation so that you can determine how to protect and serve your residents up that are more isolated in this county. The road that has served the public for many, many years is failing. And I would just ask, is this the direction that you want our county to go? It was maintained at one time and improved over years. And now it's, it's just falling apart. Um, I'm hoping that I can stay up there <laughs> just like everybody else. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, okay uh, Dick, did you? Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, road, department, road department, we, department, we, we have, we have, we have road master, road master, road master, road master to come in, to come in, to carry his chair to his Normally we don't want, want, want to, want to put some content on this, but this is an ongoing thing, thing impacting, impacting uh, 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 the, the convenience, convenience and, and safety, safety of a lot of people. Can you like to explain a little bit, a little bit, in regards to all, all of what we're doing on the work of the North Hill Middle School? And I believe and we, I have, believe some we have some pictures that we can show. So we'd like to have, like those, to have those in. As you know, but for everybody else, I'm Paul Slater, I'm the assistant roadmaster. Um, you know, that slide's been going on for, as everybody knows, it's, it's here from the West Fork for several years now. There was a previous failure up there uh, just to the uh, north um, that appears to have stabilized itself. The, uh, the one that's picture. Um, the one that's going on now has been going on for a few winters now. Um, over that time, we've you know, cleaned the road up a number of times. We've brought in barricades and closed it down to one lane uh, with yield signs on one end. Um, we, about two years ago, we started a conversation with warehouses company because they own all the property upslope and downslope. And we started talking to them about options there because where it's coming from is their land. Um, and it's, it's been a very slow process. We were able to reach an agreement um, back in about January, February. We finally got the paperwork in place uh, in April to remove a bunch of the trees up there. Um, we had requested to remove substantially more trees uh, than they allowed, but we did get, I think, about 30 trees off the slope um, to make it a whole lot easier to to clean up the material that comes down um, so that we're dealing with you know rocks and dirt and stumps instead of dealing with a bunch of trees piled and mixed in with the material. Um, the roadbed itself, um, you know, there's no indication that there's any stability issues with the road. Um, there's definitely stability issues upslope of the road on the warehouse side. Um, John and I have uh, recently talked about having an engineer come up and take a look at it um, and just provide us with their opi official opinion in writing. Um, I did have an engineer take a quick look at it. Uh, I don't remember the date, but it's been months ago. And, uh, you know, their initial response was that's a really tough slide to deal with, um, that it wouldn't be easy and it would be very expensive. Um, you know, our approach has been to, you know, clean up the mess as fast as we can as it comes down the road back open as quickly as possible. There have been some times when, because of weather conditions and the slide, um, the activity that was going on at the time, um, we did have to detour traffic around uh, through the Elliott State Forest. Um, we spent some time going through there and making sure that was open and, and drivable and uh, cleaned up the road a little bit and smoothed it out. Um, it's not a great detour, uh, but it is uh, you know, a, a travelable gravel road one lane with full outs like a lot of our county gravel roads. Um, so we did that. Um, again, we're, we're going to probably have an engineer take a look at this and try to come up with some potential options and kind of orders of magnitude cost. Um, the other thing that we talked about is we've got, as you can see in this picture, we've got a lot of material that's built up over some time out from behind the wall, uh, the barricades. And so we talked about moving the barricades over a little bit more to uh, widen that out a little bit, uh, make it more like a lane and a half instead of just one lane, as well as uh, coming in there and uh, 
clean it up the existing paved lane and, and doing some kind of asphalt patch there just to smooth it up. It's pretty rough. Mm -hmm. um, we did remove the, the trees that were, were felled. We had to hire a contractor to do that because uh, that's you know, pretty dangerous work. Uh, we have some staff that can fall trees, but not in those conditions. Um, so we did that. We just got all those hauled out of there. There's a handful of small alders that are left that uh, will allow people to just cut their firewood. Um, but that's that's kind of where we're at currently. Um, you know, once we have an engineer take a closer look at it. Um, one other thing I should mention is, you know, Warehouser has, of course, a whole uh, group of staff people, including engineers and geologists on staff. Um, the Warehouser, you know, I've heard this third hand from others. Their geologist uh, has had a lot of concern about removing trees off that slope um, and whether or not it would actually destabilize the slope even more. Um, so, you know, there's there's kind of back and forth. It's hard to get uh, you know them to let us take too much off there because of that. So, yeah, that's kind of where it sits right now. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate, well, I appreciate the explanation very much. With that, with that, uh, let's move let's on move to on the on citizen comments. comments uh, Vanessa, Vanessa Payne. Payne. Thank you. I'm going to stand for this because I'm going to stand for something that I'm passionate about. I really wanted a fair election. And I didn't see a fair election. There was a lack of transparency, a lack of observer access. Your election was shut down for three hours without vote counting at all. What I observed, I came early to my shift. I was supposed to be there between 9 and 10. I got there at 8.30. No one was in the observation room for the verification process. Um, I failed it and um, hoping to come back. I was only there for 30 minutes. I saw several mules come in with blue bags. Um, I saw Lark's boyfriend from Powers deliver a bag. I saw June Hinhosa from the city of Bandon drop off bags from Bandon lockbox and Dee Dee decided, decided to deputize, to deputize her, her after the fact. fact. I also I saw Mike Hogan come in with multiple bags, bags with another lady. They, they were, were um, as soon as soon they, they dropped off the bags, bags they went into Dee Dee's office, office like they were employees, employees walked in there, fraternized, fraternized with her. Um, um, Dee Dee stayed in their office most of the time when this was all going on. I also observed the janitor came by and wanted no one to lock the doors and she wanted to lock the doors at nine so no observers could come in. I said, no, no, you gotta let the observers in and so she decided to go till 10 o'clock. She didn't start counting votes until after 12. Um, I also noticed she put in one observer the whole time when there was all the ballots in there all at once, unopened, what was Mo, uh, a, a Democrat, Democrat with no with other observers, observers in there in the room, and I asked to be in there, and she denied access. I saw, I saw a heap a, bo a box heaping with undeliverable ballots return that, that were opened right, right beside the ballots that were sorted, and they were verified with, uh, for signature scans. There, I also saw Taryn and Lark looking at four boxes, and they had a list that were all pre-done pre rubber bands. I not saw any rubber band in the whole process. And I heard them whispering to each other, oh, I'm so tired, I've been here for 14 hours. And that was at 8 o'clock, about 8.30 when I was there. And she said, shh, that's in propriety. I tried to get back in there. I tried to get other people to come to observe. And so I had no choice. I took a phone and put it outside the window and tried, and tried to, to, to observe what was going on in the thing. thing. I, I actually talked to the sheriff, a couple, uh, not sheriff, the deputies that were out there, and I said, this is what I'm going to do. And Dee Dee 
basically said, come on in, I'll let you observe. So I came in, I knew it was going to be entrapment. She called us, she came in and says, if you calm down, I'll let you in. And I, and I went in there and, and I said, I'll be an angel. I'll come in there and be an angel. And then she called the city cops on me and had me escorted out. Didn't say you need to wind down. Thank you. I'm, I'm just letting you know. She lied. She tried entrapment. The process is not transparent. And I, I do appreciate being able to speak out loud to the people. I hope a lot of people hear it. Next week, we have uh, Gail, Gail Farrell. I want everybody to see me. I am agreeing with Danessa. We have a group here of many people who have witnessed irregularities in the election. My husband was to poll watch and he came at 1240-ish. He was supposed to watch from one to two. At about 1250, he was told he was not needed and dismissed and not allowed to go in and poll watch which defeats, which defeats the whole purpose, purpose of poll watching. watching. We, we have, have I, I, I know what happened, happened to Danessa. Danessa. It's, it's all, all documented. documented. And, and uh, there's, there's a group, group of us that are very concerned, concerned for the election, election irregularities, irregularities, that they are not fair, they are not transparent. Are not transparent. Um, we, we are not, not getting who we're trying, trying to vote for. for. We're getting who, who, uh, people who are predetermined. And that is not the United States of America. That is not freedom. So, so we're not, not going to back, back down. down, we are we going are to continue. continue. We, we are, are determined. determined, we, we are, are perseverant. This is wrong, wrong. we're calling we're everybody, everybody out, out, including all of you, uh, law, law enforcement, enforcement. Everyone, everyone who's, who's doing, doing this, this. It's, it's gonna, gonna come out. out. The, the light, light will shine on this whole process. process. And, and it is um, going to be, everyone's gonna be held accountable. So, so we are, are working, working for, for our, our next, next generation. generation. We do not we want our grandchildren and our children to have, to have this, this kind of country where we are not free, free where, where only elite, elite people rule. So, so I'm, looking I'm looking you in the, the eye, eye, and I'm, I'm telling, telling you, you, we're not going to stop. stop. This, this is, is something, something we're very passionate, passionate about, and it, it will not end. So just you're on notice. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn Hughes. Carolyn Hughes, and following uh, Carolyn, Denise Vaquez, would you kind of move up to the front, Denise, so that way we can, uh, when you, so as soon as Carolyn is done, you can start your presentation. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Um, I am Carolyn Hughes. I've been a resident on the West Fork of the Noahoma for about 46 years. And um, I'm here expressing some concerns, which you've already heard of most of, um, from my neighbors and friends. Earlier this year, uh, some of us met with Commissioner Sweet at the Allegheny Community Center and talked about the concerns we have and talked about options for resolution. At that time, Mr. Sweet did a tour of the slide area. Very recently, we got our hopes up when we saw the road closure sign singing that work was going to be done to resolve the issue at Long Last. You can only imagine our disappointment when we discovered that this was only for logging and actually made the situation worse. Now they're going to have to bring in uh, some type of loader and log trucks to haul the trees out that were cut and dumped down the hill. To be noted, there are numerous homes above the slide area. We've been dealing with one lane traffic for going on three years. Our population is predominantly elderly and emergencies are a cause for concern. The road has been closed a number of times this winter due to mudslides bringing down trees and rocks to block the road. It's disconcerting to drive by and see rocks falling down the hill. The road is in terrible repair with potholes being narrow, bordered by a concrete barrier on one side and a wall of borders on the river side. Concern regarding the viability of the road structure with all the impact of the falling boulders. This is an ongoing safety concern as with the instability of the hill, it really is a matter of time before there is an accident which could result in a fatality. 
We understand the issue of jurisdictional property rights between Weyerhaeuser and the county, but it is time to find a resolution. For resolution, we would like our road restored to two lanes, and we would like the hill secured so that we are not in constant concern of being caught in a slide. Thank you for your time. And then next, Karen Fry. Good morning, Denise. Good morning. My name is Denise Vasquez, and last night at about 10.30, when we were alerted of what was going on with Danessa at the um, clerk's office at the courthouse, I went to Coquille and was met by the police when I asked if the police would take a report um, from me that I believed that crimes were being committed inside the county clerk's office. I was told that the city of Coquille Police Department didn't um, deal with election um, crimes and that was to be brought to the county commission. So I'm bringing it to your attention, Mr. Sweet. Or Mr. Main, I don't know where Ms. Cousins is, that it was not transparent. There were things that were being done in there. I don't know what was being done in there because we weren't allowed in there. But it's, it doesn't seem right. This was a very important day for us. It's election day. There's nothing, there's no day more important than that. And I'm bringing it your attention. Thank you. Karen, and then following Karen, Doug Barzell. Good morning. I'm Karen Fry, and I live on the West Fork Little Coma Road, and I've been there for about 13 years. The road, for the most part, has been in good shape until the slide started about three years ago. It's gotten more active and severe. The danger is every day for us, not knowing when we go through the road uh, if we're going to make it through without something coming down and hitting our cars. We don't get much support from the county as far as fixing the problem. When we met with Commissioner Sweet, he told us there's no money to fix the road. And we chose to live there. That was very insulting, sir. Um, it's unexcusable in my book. It's evident that you really don't care for the people up there. There was logging done last week, and it was only made worse. We've already had issues with the mud on the road. Saturday, it was so bad, cars were sliding as if it were ice. The mud had nowhere to go as the trees are piled up and blocking the path for the mud. The road crew was called and did not come out until Monday. If there's an emergency and we need an ambulance, it wouldn't be able to get through. If uh, they have to dispatch another ambulance to come out, it has to come up over Dean's Mountain, and we're not even sure that's possible. There needs to be a plan, and with good weather coming on with the summer, we're hoping that uh, the plan would be implemented. You do have a plan. I hope. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But we don't know if there's other issues that don't always allow us to carry out the plan. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Doug, and following Doug, Howard Bull. My name is Doug Farrell. Oh, Farrell, I'm sorry. Yes, from, from Coos Bay. Bay. And, and my, my wife, wife was up, up here prior to I was me being up here, but I'm just going to reiterate what she said and uh, that a little bit of my background, I'm retired and ran my own telecommunications, successful telecommunications communications business for over 30 years, so I know how things should operate efficiently and successfully. And this election was not efficient and successful. 
I signed up to be an observer. I went to the orientation. Uh, they gave me a time, a day, and I showed up. I showed up a half hour early. No one acknowledged me. I sat there, finally went up to the window, said, I'm here to observe. And one of the uh, requirements was to show your identification and follow the rules. They didn't ask for my ID. I just told them who I was. Then they came out and said, are you Doug? I go, yes. They go, you can go. You're dismissed. I go, for what? Why? They go, no, we just don't need you. To me, that isn't efficient. And um, I don't know about you, but I was raised that honesty is the best policy. And um, suffer the consequences as they may be. So I hope you keep that in mind and that maybe you can uh, fix the election some way to be more efficient and honest. Thank you. Thank you. Howard, and then following. Uh, Howard and following Howard, Rod Taylor. Does this elevate at all? Pardon me? Does this elevate? I'd like to. Yeah, stand. you can pick it up if you'd like, <laughs> certainly. Good, Good morning, morning Commissioner. How are you doing today? Um, uh, 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 elections, elections, integrity. integrity. I came to be in the observer yesterday, scheduled time at 10 a.m. I came in early. Uh, there were a couple of people that were waiting in line to be called in. And uh, I went in and I signed in. Of course, they asked for no identification. <coughs> but she signed me in and I said, okay. I said, when does it start? She says, well, uh, there's not gonna be any ballot done today until probably five o'clock. Wait a minute, today is election day. Why aren't there counting ballots? Uh, we don't have personnel to count ballots until 5 o'clock or after. And I'm thinking that's pretty irregular for an elections office not to be done in proper order. She says, well, this kind of is what it is. So I was pretty much dismissed and I left. And then uh, I had a question, and this has probably been uh, talked about before. Uh, the elected, the elected officials, officials office, the, the person that runs that, is supposed to be a nonpartisan office. office. Is this correct? Then why is the DNC chair as the elected official? And we can think about that. It's a good question. You know, it's supposed to be nonpartisan. I see that inappropriate and illegal. And down, down the road down after the election is done, I'm, I'm sure she will be replaced. But, you know, as everybody says, there's consequences for every action, and these things will be followed up upon at a later date. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Rod, and following uh, Rod, uh, James Bennett. I'm also electing to stand. This is a beautiful dais that's been built, but its, uh, its flaw is that it places you above the people who are, who've come to speak with you. And I believe that's inappropriate. The purpose of elections is to convince the defeated that they were defeated fairly. Now, no conclusions have been drawn yet as to the outcome of yesterday's election. Actually, I should say this month's election, more appropriately, since ballots began being processed on May 5th and are ostensibly continuing to be processed through June 7th. That's election month, not election day. I believe that, that um, the accountability and transparency of our elections process is the key to the preservation of our republic. That has not been maintained. I've spoken with you before. Well, not you, John, because you weren't here the last two meetings. But I have spoken to the commission before about the 
ethical problems, the, the lack of transparency and the apparent lack of accountability in appointing the immediately stepped down Democrat Party chair as the county clerk. I would be equally opposed to anyone who was uh, a substantial official in the, in the county GOP uh, from being in that office. I think that would be inappropriate. There will be accountability for this. There will be honest and fair elections in Coos County. And I, I believe that uh, I believe that, that process needs to begin today and I am going to play a role in that. Thank you very much. James Bennett and uh, after James, David Jennings. Morning, James. Morning. I too prefer to stand. We think, first of all, I th I think it's very interesting that uh, fearless Melissa Cribbins is absent today, not even on Zoom. And uh, we think that it's appropriate that our current commissioner step down. You've had a decade to do what you were going to do. The original framework did not provide for people being career politicians, and there's a really good reason for it. Now, we're quite sure that quite a bit of money is stuck to you up and beyond the $60,000 a year salary. The will of the people has been shown. I've been involved in Rod Taylor's campaign, so I can only speak to him. you're addressing the chair. I'm addressing, I'm addressing the room, sir. I'll say the same thing I said to Melissa, and I would thank you to count my time, extend my time. You guys are in kind of a tight spot, because if people are paying attention, I can only speak to Rod's campaign, to which I'm involved. But the people, you can tell that he is the favorite candidate over Melissa Cribbins. So you're in a tight spot. If you're complicit in stealing the primary, it's kind of a bust, because the people know what's going on. We've seen a representation on what's happening in Coos County. But if you wait until the general, that's going to be tough, too, because as you will see in the coming weeks and months, election fraud, the subject of election fraud, is going to be front and center. And every attempt is going to be made by our treasonous mainstream media to hide it, but it's not going to work. There's been an attempted overthrow of our country. And when you don't stand up for, much less be complicit in stolen elections, there's names for that type of thing. And they have very stiff penalties. We're not going to go away. Next is FOIA time. The Wellness Center, the Homeless Center. What about those climate action plans that people don't know about that were making their rounds five or six years ago? Highly impactful climate action plans that provide for no more propane, no more natural gas, and no more fireplaces. Did you guys already sign it? Did you sign climate action plans? That's what I thought. We're also going to do FOIAs to see if any of the care money stuck to people it shouldn't have. We're not, not going to go, go away. away. As, As I, I said, said before, before, we're taking our country, country back, back, and we're going to start, start right here in beautiful Coos County, County which, which should, should be, be rocking by, by mistake. mistake. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed burn tight. David Jennings, followed by LaDonna Jenkins. I really in one sense don't even know what to say to all of this. It's amazing to me that people lose elections and basically continue to think that they just never lose anything, that they always win. And I think they're being sincere in that. I would also say even though these people are not going to accept that, 
that, you know, I don't know Dee as a personal friend. I've been a friend with her for a long time. I don't know the people that are in the elections office now, but my experience from being an elections observer for decades, as an election people just want to do their job. They have a dedication to a fair result. I know personally, if I worked in elections, despite the fact that I'm a Democrat, I'd rather be dead than do anything at Fox, because that undermines democracy. I also think another thing that undermines democracy is when you make allegations that people are criminals or guilty of taking money that they shouldn't take. You create conditions that basically erode democracy and trust. Public employees on the whole only want to do their job, earn a fair salary, and go home. They don't have some kind of grand agenda to undermine this country. If there are problems with the elections department, it'd be nice to hear the rhetoric kind of be brought down a little bit and the problems be described as problems. And if you really think there's a crime being committed, I think you need to lay out the evidence. And as I've said before, I don't think at this point that anybody has done that. They just recycled these allegations and these insinuations. I find it deeply troubling. I'm not exactly sure what the cure of it is. I do I think, think there does need to be more transparency. At one point, it'd be nice if every election office in the country, including this one, had everything, every part of it on tape, 24 hours a day that was both live streamed and stored so you could look at it. But I really object vehemently to these continued personal attacks that are not founded, and I think do far more damage to democracy than anything that's being done in the elections office. We've come, We've come to a sad, sad point where this is a reality that we have such deep distrust. But it itself, I think, is a great threat to this country. And um, I don't know what to say. I guess, John, I'll congratulate you on your apparent re-election. And um, wish you the best. Thank you. LaDonna, and then next, Stan Avery. Good morning, though, Don. So I was, I was scheduled, scheduled to be an observer on Friday um, for the election for the certification for the signatures. And when I showed up, there was another young lady sitting in there. And I went to the window and they asked if I needed a ballot. And I said, no, I'm here to be the observer from one to three. Well, two young ladies behind the desk and Dee Dee Murphy looked at me and they looked at the young lady sitting in the chair and then they looked at me again, and they looked at the sign-in sheet, and then they looked at her and they told her, we thought she was you. They did not ask for her ID to come into the observation room. And even after I asked, well, can I come in anyways and observe to see how it's done? Um, she let me in, she still didn't ID me. Um, she didn't check anything of my person. Um, and Clearly on the regulations, it shows the rules that they want you to go by when you're observing. None of those rules were abided by, by Dee Dee or the two other young ladies at all, so they violated their own regulations. That really concerns me that when we talk about we have secure elections and IDs aren't even being asked to come into an observation room or checked or anything, uh, my phone was off because that was one of the regulations. She didn't even check to ask if my phone was off. Those are the same things that really concerned me about going into the election room. Um, are, to me, the elections are not as secure as people keep saying that they are. And I am an eyewitness. Black Lives Dictionary says probable cause is witnesses to the fact, not an opinion of two or three witnesses who see what's going on as probable cause. Okay, okay. There, has there has been multiple, multiple people, people that have come up here, including myself, myself as eyewitnesses to what, what we have, have seen going on in, in that room. I, I too showed, showed up last night because Miss Rain was, was under duress. And, and you can, can imagine how we feel because of what happened in 2020, how, how we felt um, when she sounded under duress. And I did go down there. I did, in fact, videotape the entire thing, so I have it all documented down. And um, so yes, yeah, there's, there's multiple, multiple there, there is probable cause, cause there's multiple, multiple witnesses, witnesses to what's going on. And I just I wanted to point that out because of what the previous gentleman said. My, my second, second thing 
is because we have come to you with these concerns in the Code of Conduct in Coos County, uh, employees and commissioners, if there is a subject or concern brought to you, and there's been more than enough, that is going on within the county, you are obligated by your oath to impose an investigation on this subject. And um, I just, I think that it's really important that you take your people who you have been um, trying to help for the last decade, how we feel seriously. And the second thing, the other thing I want to say really quick is that I've been monitoring Melissa Cribben's behavior on her response to people's questions on Facebook. And so far, she's only been rebuttaled by insulting them and not answering the questions. And I think that that is not leadership um, behavior. And I wish she was here because I really wanted to talk to her about that. And the last thing I wanted to say is, this last week I posted a video, a series that was a question for everybody, if they could tell the difference between Portland and Coos County. And what I did was I took pictures of Portland and pictures of Coos County and I asked people who can tell the difference between which. And most people said, oh, that's all Portland. The reality is that there was only two, few, two pictures of Portland and the rest were of Coos County of the homeless situation and crisis that we have. That is very, very sad to me. Um, we have a serious problem here and it's not because of the individual, it's because of leadership. One more step. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, Stan Avery. Good morning, Stan. Uh, I'm going to sit down so I don't unplug that thing. I'm a little bit too tall. But anyway, um, okay, so new subject, uh, but and I hope that I'm misinformed about this. And uh, I'm assuming Melissa will monitor this later on. But this is regarding the building codes department. And there's growing apprehension and, and consternation among uh, tradesmen, contractors, and also the staff of the office who are all friends of ours. We've worked with them for years. And this has been growing. And uh, the, 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 the board, the board of commissioners, has made a recent decision to appropriate that state office, uh, the building codes office, and there's uh, the, the, the staff there and contractors below have been expressing uh, apprehension and uncertainty about where is this going to go, what are we going to do. Um, there was a meeting uh, scheduled for the commission to meet with the staff on Monday, and they were there, and the commissioners uh, declined to convene. And I don't know what happened there, but that actually increased the apprehension and the consternation. I had actually uh, applied to pay for a permit and I got, I was informed that, well, we're not sure how to proceed on this because everything is, is, is uh, we don't even know, uh, are we gonna continue working? Who are we working for? What is the basis of everything? And so the apple cart is upset and uh, I would love to believe and hear that everything's fine, it's gonna be really smooth. My political instinct is always to go with local control. That's you guys. That's just everything else being equal. But I'm just letting you know, I'm speaking from my position as a, as a plumbing contractor that uh, there's a lot of concern that needs to be uh, assuaged. And uh, one of the things, while I have time, um, I was not planning on mentioning this, but I'm going to because it's, uh, it's germane and appropriate. Um, uh, uh, Melissa uh, Cribbins, uh, you know, uh, uh, a while back, she, I was mystified that she communicated with me that she was quickly, she quickly regretted hiring Dee Dee Murphy because of the things that she did over the eight uh, applicants, and I am no longer mystified as to her reason for telling me. Thank you. Is there anyone else? That's that's uh, everyone that we have on our our list. It's a uh, yes, sir. Oh, okay. And you're Brewster. 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 Brewster Williams. Punky Brewster. Okay. Uh, I respect what this gentleman had to say here that uh, we're from the elections office. 
sounds like he wants to come to Common Grounds, and I respect that. I just want to go over so everybody does understand. 20% of the voters in Oregon have their affiliation party changed this election. I was changed from a Republican to a non-affiliated voter. I had friends that were changed from independent to Democrat. Um, we had in a group of 100 that we asked the question, we had 33 people raise their hand that their party was changed to NAP. Um, there is also, we found a numerical stamp on the outside of the ballots from zero to four. When we uh, took those and transposed them to what the um, election people, what, what their party was, it seemed to coincide with what the party was 100%. If you were a four, you were an NAB. If you were a three, you were an independent. If you were a two, you were a Republican. If you were a one, you were a Democrat. And there was also a zero, and we don't know what the zero is quite yet, but we do have all that information. This makes it easy for someone to harvest ballots before they even get to the clerk's office, so that's concerning. What Danessa said in here today was workers, boyfriends, and friends were picking up ballots that were not deputized and then deputized after. That's very concerning. It is election day yesterday, and we still have no results today. That's also concerning. The office did not start counting until 5 p.m. yesterday. They stopped counting and did not start again until after midnight. They tried to remove us at 10 so the count could proceed. Once we did not leave, then they started, they realized we weren't gonna leave. They started counting again with observers in there. We stayed till two o'clock in the morning until the election office was closed, not last night. The count will not continue till one today. I believe there's 6,000 votes still, still out there. I voted yesterday, everybody I know voted yesterday. None of the votes that we have have been counted yet. So there's still 6,000 votes remaining to be counted. And those are the things that are concerning. This gentleman seemed to be reasonable, so I'm also reasonable. I would like to come to solutions, and uh, we need to know the problems in order to have solutions. So I just wanted to come up here and say that. Thank you, guys. Is there anyone else who would like to provide comment? Yes, sir. We want to come up and Hi, my name is Randy Mason. I live in Banning, Oregon. And my question, you know, I found through uh, DD because I also was an observer. And I like DD. I, I've never met him before. But I explained to DD that I was unhappy that she was uh, appointed in the position that she was because she was just the head of the uh, Democratic chair in this county. You know, I didn't quite understand, but you three commissioners voted for her. You brought her in. Is that wrong? Or is that right? We appointed her. Yes, okay. So, so I was amazed because if you had appointed a Republican chair, I would have been upset about that too. So I'm really upset about that. I don't have nothing against Dee Dee. I liked her when I met her and talked to her. And, you know, she was kind to me when I was there for that couple hours the other day. Um, so it isn't on a personal basis. But what I want to know, why did you do it? What was your reasoning? I think you owe us that. Well, I'll tell you why I, why I did it, although we don't normally respond. We're here to say that she was the lone candidate that applied uh, for the appointment that had experience as, uh, as a county clerk. Well, that may be, but I know you had a lot of uh, people who applied for that job besides her. Uh, I but don't why know. would you pick the, the Democratic Excuse me, I left the word out there. The lone candidate that had experience okay. as a county clerk. None of the others I understand that, but and in today's age, with all the questions yeah, I, about I mean, that. I gave you my answer at that phone. Bob can give his if he wants. Okay, Bob, I'd like to hear your too. the same thing, but I had no idea she was the Democratic local clerk. If you did, would that have changed your... No, no I didn't. Well, no, that's okay. I Pretty understand, Bob. You can't know everything. everything. I'm just amazed that you would do that and then expect the people of this county to believe in the honesty and integrity of the election. What I knew is she worked there for, what, 20 some odd years, always seemed to be pleasant, honest, etc. Right. I had no idea she was a, a local Democratic chair. Well, thank, thank you for you asking. Thank you. All right. One, One more, more, sir. Uh, Your name? My name is George. I'm sorry. Greg Spores, I lived in Oregon all my life. Mm -hmm. I haven't voted for you once, Mr. Sweet. Uh, 
and your resident if, if homeless in Bandit. In Bandit. If, if the, the Board, board of, commissioners of Commissioners are men and women of integrity, men who love this country, and women who love this country, and love our freedom, our liberty, our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, you would stand up after hearing that as much as 25% of voters have been suppressed, not even allowed to vote, that there's some kind of a number system on the ballot that makes it e common sense, common sense, that makes it easy for people to say, okay, let's change that one. And let, that's voter suppression. It's, it's horrendous. You should be appalled. You should stand up and say, no, we're gonna fix this now and we're gonna go to a new vote. That's, That's what, what Americans, Americans do. do. They, they don't, don't, they don't, don't roll with, with, with so, so much, much fraud, fraud. or, or, or the, the, the opportunity for so much fraud, fraud for so much corruption. corruption. You, you don't, don't just stand, stand up and say, okay, okay well, let's, let's just let's move, move on. on. No, that's not right. If 25% of the vote, you should have to, you should say, no, we're going to check that out right now, and we're going to find out if this is true, and if this is true, we're going to fix it. You should be pounding your desk up there, saying, no, we're not going to do this in Oregon. That's all I got to say. Yes, sir. Now, you are a hand your turn. Yes, sir. Yeah. where the ballots were counted this early, all of the ballots were counted this early, so I'm not sure what his uh, problem is. And I have a, a question for county council. Uh, is there any law, rule, or regulation, or tradition that prevents uh, a chair person of a county political party from being uh, County clerk. Um, I th the answer is no. Um, it's a nonpartisan office, which means that uh, when it's on the ballot and people are running for election, um, their partisan affiliation isn't isn't listed. Nevertheless, they are, can be and often are affiliated or a member of political parties. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who has had not had a say that wishes to have to make public comment? Yes, ma'am. My name is Tanya DePaulo. I live in Bandon. I've been a longtime resident since 1980. I'm completely unprepared to even speak. However, all I want to say is, as a believer of God, and I think that's absolutely the most important thing to being a human being on this earth, um, if anyone is awake and aware and has been looking at history, we can see time and time again the fall of every great nation when our leaders are, for one, not true believers of our Heavenly Father, and know that He's watching us all the time. No matter what we do behind closed doors, it doesn't matter. We can hide from each other. We can never, ever, ever hide from our Creator. 
And if anyone has been watching what has been going on in the last two and a half years, this has been something that has been so vitally important to see. And if we don't see now, when will we see? It's so painfully obvious to me where we're at as a nation, in our standing as human beings, to our creator, to each other. And all I can say is God is watching. And whatever we do will matter. If not in this lifetime, when we meet him, it will matter. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Last chance. Anyone else that hasn't had a chance to make a public comment that wishes to do so? Stan, uh, if you want to talk afterwards uh, to our planning director, she can uh, fill you in. Jill, uh, a, a lot, and I think answer some of the questions you had pertaining to building code. Thank you. Yeah. Not to the other you need to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. About that. And, and yes, Stan, sir. next yeah. Monday on the 23rd at 4 o'clock, here we will have that meeting again about building code. Am I invited? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a it's a public anybody. meeting. Uh, last Monday's meeting, Melissa was here. I was in. Uh, I had a doctor's appointment. Couldn't be here, and Bob was also out of town. Well, let's so give you a second chance. We're, we're, we're there Monday. At, at you you too. You get a second chance. Yeah. So. All right, well, let's uh, thank you everyone for public comment. Let's move on then with the uh, agenda items. Uh, those of you who uh, are, were here just to make public comment, you're certainly welcome to leave. You're more than welcome to stay if you'd like. If you are leave, leaving, I could do it now so we don't let disrupt the meeting. But if you choose to stay, uh, we'd love to have that. Mike, you're going to be up next, so why don't you come on up as soon as you're ready. When, when we, when all the everything settles down, and we'll start up again. Pardon me. Just a little intermission here. Maybe yeah, let's do that. How are you? Let, let's do that. I think we we've been here. Uh, at, uh, hour now let's take a five minute break uh, actually a little bit longer be back at one quarter till 11 per the clock on the wall how are you <laughs> I'm fine.